Today I want to explore a fascinating topic, how aspirin can play a role in unclogging arteries. Cardiovascular disease is number one on the list. You may have heard of claims about aspirin's ability to prevent heart attacks, but how does it actually work within our bodies to keep our arteries clear? In this video, I'm going to delve into the science, discuss when and how aspirin should be used, and share the latest medical insights. So let's get started. Let's first understand what is aspirin. Aspirin is a well-known medication often used for pain relief. It reduces inflammation. However, its role in cardiovascular health is where it truly shines. Aspirin is classified as a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. We call them NSAIDs. And it's renowned for its blood thinning properties. This ability to prevent platelets from clumping together is crucial in reducing the risk of blood clots, which can lead to blocked arteries. Now let's focus on the heart of the matter, how aspirin can help unclog arteries. When you take aspirin, it targets an enzyme called cyclooxygenase. By inhibiting this, aspirin reduces the production of thromboxane, a chemical that encourages platelets to stick together and form clots. This action helps to maintain smooth blood flow, reducing the risk of arterial blockages. I want you to think of your arteries as a network of highways. Over time, cholesterol and other substances can build up, forming plaques that narrow these pathways. Aspirin acts like a traffic controller, ensuring that blood flows smoothly and preventing these plaques from causing complete blockages. For heart health, doctors often recommend a low-dose aspirin regimen, typically around 81 milligrams per day, commonly known as baby aspirin. And this dose is generally sufficient to provide cardiovascular benefits while minimizing the risk of side effects. Consistency is the key. So taking aspirin at the same time each day is advisable. Some research suggests that taking aspirin at night may offer additional benefits as platelet activity tends to be higher in the morning. And while aspirin can be beneficial, it's not suitable for everyone. It's crucial to consult with your healthcare provider before starting an aspirin regimen especially if you have a history of gastrointestinal bleeding, ulcers, or are on any other kind of blood thinning medications. Aspirin is often recommended for individuals who have experienced a heart attack or stroke or those with certain type factors of cardiovascular disease. However, for people without a history of heart disease, the risks such as bleeding may outweigh the benefits. And from doctors' perspectives, many cardiologists emphasize that aspirin's role are most pronounced in secondary prevention, meaning it helps those who have already had heart events or heart disease. And for primary prevention, the decision to use aspirin should be personalized, take into account the individual risk factors and potential side effects. And there's been changes in guidelines. The medical guidelines have evolved with new research Organizations like the American Heart Association and the United States Preventive Services Task Force have updated their recommendations. Previously, aspirin was widely recommended for primary prevention, but new evidence suggests caution due to bleeding risks. These changes highlight the importance of personalized medical advice. And I'd like to briefly mention aspirin and suspected heart attacks. And if you suspect that you or someone else is having a heart attack, taking aspirin can be a critical first step while waiting for emergency medical help. Aspirin works by inhibiting platelets, which can help prevent further clotting in the arteries. Chewing a regular strength aspirin, about 325 milligrams, is often recommended because it allows the medication to enter the bloodstream more quickly. However, this is not a substitute for professional medical advice, and it's crucial to follow the guidance of your healthcare professionals or emergency responders in such situations. And another very important test that many doctors will check is lipoprotein A, or we call it LP little a. It's a type of protein in the blood that can contribute to the buildup of plaques in our arteries, leading to atherosclerosis or clogging within those arteries. And they found that elevated levels of LP little a are considered a hereditary risk factor for cardiovascular disease. While there is no direct treatment to lower LP little a levels, Doctors may recommend low-dose aspirin therapy as part of a broader strategy to manage cardiovascular risk, particularly if other risk factors are present. This approach can help reduce the likelihood of clot formation and support your overall heart health. And when it comes to preventing artery clogging conditions, nothing beats the proactive approach. And we need to really understand this. Maintaining a heart-healthy lifestyle is paramount. This includes eating a balanced 
diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, lean proteins, while minimizing saturated fats and sugars. Regular physical activities such as walking, cycling, or swimming can help maintain healthy weight, lower blood pressure, and improve blood sugar levels. Managing prediabetes and diabetes through diet, exercise, and medication if needed is also crucial. These lifestyle changes are the foundation in reducing the risk of these cardiovascular diseases and promoting long-term heart health. So what does this all mean for you? That if you're considering aspirin therapy, it's essential to have a conversation with your healthcare provider. They can help access your individual risk factors and determine whether aspirin is a suitable option for you. Remember, what works for one person may not work for another. And to wrap it up, I want you to realize, yes, aspirin can be a powerful tool in the fight against heart disease for the right types of conditions. So please, as I said before, always speak to your healthcare provider to ask further questions. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please share it with your friends and family. Leave your comments below. And most important, make it a great day. I'm Dr. Alan Mandel.